Hello and welcome to another Beehive 101. In this video, I'm going to cover how we're going to use Beehive's forms feature. This can be really powerful for enhancing and enriching the information you're collecting about subscribers for use with personalization, for fulfillment of your referral program, for marketing information, for advertiser data, and so, so much more. This tool allows you to collect user information upon signup and subscription, as well as a you know, form that you can then use at any point along the journey that you could drop, for example, on Twitter and have users subscribe and answer your survey in that way. Before we get started in the behind the scenes area, I'm going to work through exactly how this currently works. So if I go through and I do ej at beehive.com and hit subscribe, I'm going to be redirected to our brand new forms experience. It's worth noting that if you have your referral, pro sorry, your uh, premium publication and premium subscription set up, uh, or if you have recommendations set up, as soon as the user finishes this form, either submits it or exits it, they'll be dropped directly on that upgrade page and or recommendations page. Um, but this is just kind of that, that first step right after they subscribe. So what's your first name? Wonder EJ, last name White. What's your favorite beehive to, or tool? Beehive, of course, with career stage. I'm balling out. Let's just say that. Uh, if we go up here and scroll up to 93, I'll put my birthday in. Friday, January 8th, and we're going to hit submit. So now, thank you for your submission. We've collected that information. This staging publication has no pub, uh, posts associated with it. If I had published posts... After the user finishes that flow, they would be dropped on the index page that shows all of the live posts. But there you have it. We've now successfully subscribed a user and then collected their user information. So if I go to the dashboard, this is something I'm sure you all are familiar with. Uh, we go to subscribers, and this was the one I just created. And we go to custom fields. You can see now that the birthday that I set, the career stage, email tool, first name, and last name have all been set, and now I can use them within a post. I could say, uh, you know, this email is for folks in the career stage C-suite. See our video on custom fields to figure out how exactly you would insert those, but I can now access this information within a publication and uh, use that use that to my advantage. I could also create uh, segments. So if I was collecting information on a bunch of different users, I could create a segment of users whose custom field is C-suite or users whose custom whose birthday is before a certain date or whose favorite email tool is Beehive, for example. There's an infinite number of ways you can use this information, uh, many of which can help you refine your publication, your newsletter, and, and drive more subscribers and drive greater engagement. So how do we actually set up this tool? So under audience, we're going to see there's a new button called forms. And this is where you can create and access forms. I have two here. This is the one that we just used. You can see there's two responses. If we can click here, we'll review results, see how many questions that they answered, if you know there were any partial responses, uh, how many questions, and uh, as we move on, we will be building out better ways for you to visualize responses as makes sense. Um, but right now, you would just see the users who did respond to the uh, the post at hand. If you wanted to archive a uh, a form and not make it accessible anymore, uh, you could also do that from inside of that. Right now, because it's being used, it can't be archived. But if I came down here, I could archive this one that's live but not being used. So from the screen, I want to cover a couple things before we move on. If you start end up using a lot of different forms, uh, you can use the search field to uh, find, you know, from the list. You can filter the list. Uh, once you have forms that are set up, they show up here. Their status, whether they're live or still in draft form, is right here. The number of responses is shown here. And uh, you don't have to use forms in the signup flow. You can just have them exist and send users to them uh, within emails from links, you know, directly from something like a Twitter. Uh, but 
you can set one at a time to be the form that a user sees after they sign up. So that can be set from here. Show from uh, after users subscribe. The other options here, you can view the results as we just did. You can also copy the URL to the form. If I do that, by default, if there's no email associated, we're gonna get this gate. So the user will have to subscribe in order to see that information. However, just a quick trick, this is how it's gonna work in the uh, editor when we get to that point. But if we do email equals, and then if I type in Edward James, which is a valid email, it's going to unlock it because now I know the email to associate this information with. Pretty neat. So from here, I don't want to archive. I want to show that after user sign up. I have done the copy URL. We're good to go. So this is the experience of working with forms that are already being created. The next step is to that you may want to do is to create a form. So from here, we're going to name it something like customer survey. This is going to be the public facing title of the form. If you noticed on this form, customer registration, that's where the title goes. This description is going to be the description that shows up here. And from there, uh, we're going to set a uh, submission CTA, which is right here. And this is going to be the text that your users see once they've gone through and actually filled out the form. The final steps are to add questions. So uh, this is the interface you're gonna get, something similar to it if we make updates, but you're gonna type in the prompt for the question. What's your favorite candy, for example? Now, if you already have a custom field for your user's favorite candy, you'll be able to select it from this list. You can see these are ones that were already in the system. If you need to create a new custom field, you can do that just by clicking that button. It's gonna be a string, because these are gonna be names. If it was a number, like how many candy bars do you eat a day? You could do a number. Uh, Boolean is a true false, so it would be, uh, you know, do you, do you eat candy bars, true or false? Date would be, what was the last day that you ate a candy bar? And you could use a calendar, and the date time is gonna be similar to date, but it's gonna have a time associated with it. What time did you last eat a candy bar? So for this is going to be, what's your favorite, or sorry, uh, favorite candy. I just do all lowercase with this underscore because that's how it's going to be created in the system under the hood. Um, you can you can name it something with spaces and caps, but it'll just be under the hood will be replaced with uh, this, but I make it easy for the system. Uh, we're going to create that custom field, and now we're good to go. I'm going to make this a multiple choice question if we wanted to do something like name where it could be just anybody typing in any kind of value we could do free response but to make this a little bit more informative um, we're going to start with multiple choice and we'll click add question so from here we see the question the uh, custom field associated with the question then we can toggle whether or not this is going to be a required question or not. So let's make this required. And then we're going to add a couple options. Let's say Hershey's. Hershey's? Is Hershey's a bar? Or is it chocolate? Just generic chocolate. We say Reese's Crispy Crunch Bar. I'm obsessed. I'm literally addicted to these things. We're going to do Payday. and baby Ruth. Great, so now we have four different options for this question and we can move on. The next question might be, what is your middle name? I'm already asking for first and last, I might as well ask for middle name. For this option, we're gonna make it free response. We're gonna create a new custom field for middle name. Boom, and we're gonna add the question. So you can see with this one, it's gonna be free response so we don't have multiple choice areas. And let's not make this one required. We're gonna go opposite here. Uh, so let's leave this the way it is. We have two questions on this form. First of all, we're gonna save it. Oh, looks like that got overwritten. Customer survey. These are just some quick questions. The 
Let's go. Let's customize these real quick. You are the best. Great. Save as draft. Now, if we want to preview it, we can click this, and now we're going to be able to see the preview. What's your middle name? James. If you watch enough of these, you'll be able to piece together an entire identity for me. You'll be able to steal my identity. Let's hope that doesn't happen. What's your favorite candy? Reese's Krispy Crunch Bar, of course. You can see this is preview mode, so the answers aren't going to be saved. But you can hit, let's go. You're the best. Continue. Awesome. We just QA'd our form. So from here, let's publish this. This will now be accessible live. We can now go over here and copy this URL. So now, if I were to go, we have a bunch of forms open. I can just drop this URL anywhere. And if it doesn't have that email tag, it's going to say that you have to subscribe. If it does have an email associated with it, we're going to get this. So that's the first step. Now, quick pro tip. If we do two curly braces and then email and then two curly braces out here, this is going to, within the Beehive editor and a bunch of other tools, if you're familiar with magic links, this is going to work the same way as a magic link. So what you can do is we can actually take this entire link and now this is where it gets fun. If we go to a post, say we wanted to re-engage or engage with our current users, we'd say take this fun survey, we're going to add a button, we're going to make the button take me, I'm a survey, and we're going to make this link that with our magic link, perfect, and now we're going to preview and let's uh, use this, I've used that one already. Let's use this Michael at Beehive. Now if I click this, this is gonna open a new window. You can see it replaced the Michael at Beehive.com right there. And so it's gonna associate this data with his account. He's a, Mer a Hershey's fan. And Mike's middle name is going to be Kevin. I don't know if that's his middle name. So once we hit this, response saved. What this allows you to do is to re-engage your users and collect information about them over time for whatever purposes that might benefit um, you know, everyone involved. So if I go in here and go to custom fields, favorite candy is Hershey's, middle name is Kevin. We have this other information that we collected earlier when we signed up and we're, we have a even more robust um, full data set about them. And we can see first name down here. So. This is a quick uh, crash course into how forms work. Super, super powerful. At the time of this filming, which is December 20th, uh, 2022, we're about to launch this tool. There's a couple upgrades that we're going to be making, um, which, will be, which will allow you to control some of that language if a user is not signed in on the survey form or on the form. You can, you can make it sound more like a survey. Um, we're also going to be integrating the forms tool with our external embed forms as well as pop-ups so that if users come into your, uh, you know, into your system by signing up on a pop-up or an external embed form, we're going to make it super easy to uh, integrate their information and, and pass them into a pop-up or one of these uh, registration forms. And, you know, beyond that, there's so much more we plan to do. Automations, um, you know, connecting the data and the events here with, you know, API information through uh, webhooks and, and other uh, things that are going to be very exciting for the way that you can transform and, and move this data around. So can't talk about too much more and too many specifics, but uh, stick with us and you're going to be able to do some truly, truly amazing things with this information and this data. Hopefully you found this valuable. Please leave any comments that you have in the comments below and let us know uh, what you build with this. We can't look for We can't wait to see uh, what you build. Have a great day.